Hi, I'm Lance McMillan for Victory Point Games, here today to talk to you about the new game in the Napoleonic 20 series, Danube 20. This is the new first edition of the gold standard for this new series, and this is the French campaign in 1809 against Austria. It features the twin battles of Aspern Essling and Vagram. Why don't we take a look inside the package? This is the new rule booklet, four color, wonderful new artwork by Tim Allen. Fan fold here. We use the back cover for additional play aids for the game to help pe people get uh, into the game. Two sets of scenarios back here, one for the Aspirin Essling game, one for the Vagram game. These are the new card backs for the cards. You get 25 of them, one set for Aspirin Essling, the other set for Vagram. And there's the bonus 13th card if you want to use it. It's an optional card that can be used in either game. These are the new version 3.0 player aids. Include some new things. For example, the uh, controlled advance table, which is brand new to the game. The new terrain effects chart. Has a double-sided map. And while it looks like it's the same terrain, there's actually minor adjustments that occurred in the six weeks between the two different battles. And then we've got the counters. These are the new super thick counters, laser cut. Well, I've already punched out a bunch of them. You'll notice that some of them have different unique shapes. This is for a objective hex. The objective hex is very in location in the Asper Nestling games. And you place it as listed in the rules depending on where the French decide they're going to across the Danube, and they get to put our new uh, bridgehead marker there. And you get to punch out all the counters. I punched out most of them because we got started here. And uh, these are the really thick guys. They stand up on their own if you want to use that as your fog of war, though I don't recommend it because they wouldn't hold up very well that way. But those are the components. So I'm going to set the game up for you now, and you can see how it plays. Okay, so this is the Battle of Aspern Essling setup for turn one. Uh, we're using the historical French crossing site. We actually have four other possible sites that the French army could have used, and those are options, but we're just going to do the historical one for you guys here. In addition to the forces, uh, you see the first part of the French army is actually already across the river. Uh, we'll put down the objective. The French want to seize that objective. This is the new fancy hexagonal objective marker. We place that depending on which crossing site, what their immediate objective is. And they get a special bridgehead marker, which is fortified little redoubt with a, a garrison to hold the, uh, the anchor terminus of the pontoon on the far shore. And then, of course, the pontoon is operational. So we put that nearby the pontoon so you know. Now the French, when they did this attack, only had enough supplies to build one single pontoon for the crossing. And they're doing this operation in the midst of one of the heaviest spring floods from the melt-off in the Alps of the Danube River. So the bridge was in constant peril of being swept away, and of course that wasn't helped by the fact the Austrians were dumping everything from mill wheels and flaming boats into the river to try to take out the bridge. That's all reflected in the game. So as you see, here's the Austrian army all arrayed, waiting to come down on the poor French. And the French only have a tiny force, one core, two units split between it, who have just started to come across the bridge. So we'll start the game, and you'll see how it works. So the first thing we do, normally we draw a card, but don't turn one, the French don't draw a card. We would start with the French trying to break out of their bridgehead, or expand out, and take uh, the areas that they need. So go ahead, Frank, and do what you need to do. I don't think I'm going to do, be a lot of the uh, breaking out. I think this first turn we're going to try to consolidate. This guy moves two, so he can move over to Aspirin. That's one of uh, that's a nice fortified village. That looks like a good okay. place. Uh, the other half of the core can move two. He can move up and take Essling and be fortified there and hold the objective. Uh, maybe we'll move Napoleon up with him. Make sure we've got that objective well held. And I get a reinforcement turn one, is that correct? That is correct. You get, da-da, the giant 
Second core. The second core, nice big core. So he starts down here in the line of communication. Mm -hmm. He enters the map. One. So he goes one, two. two. No, now, it costs one to come right in. It costs one, that's yeah. one, two. So he ends up on that island. Now if I could, I could suppose I could spend a morale point and force march them. All and get an extra move, that's yeah. right. But I now, don't think I want to do that. No, not yet. But I want to show everybody one thing that we've skipped over here. Every time you use that bridge, there's a chance you get swept away. So when this guy crossed the bridge to move into Essling, you have to roll the dice. Oh, all right. Let's see what happens. One. Bad news, Frank. <laughs> the bridge is not operating. The bridge just broke, and that guy didn't get across the bridge. Ah. So you're stranded on the far bank with the bridge knocked out. Nobody can roll ones like I can. You're very talented. <laughs> so you're off to an auspicious start. Yeah, that's a polite word yeah. for the, the start I'm off to. Okay, so that's the end of, and I, and I already moved this guy. Right. I probably should have moved that other guy first, but I didn't. Yeah. So you live and you learn, or sometimes you, you don't live. But you <laughs> live and perish. You live and perish. <laughs> okay, technically, the Austrians move first, but nobody's released on the first turn. Oh, all right. Because they've just caught you coming across, and I didn't roll a good release number. So we're starting the second turn now, and I get to roll well, my release. Now the first thing we do, oh, oh, oh do you roll I'm that sorry, first? I, you yes, get I get in my card. Okay. So I get my card, and I have even the simplest things are difficult. So I roll to see what bad things happen to me this turn. A four, I can't combine t different unit types in the same attack. So my cavalry can't work together with my infantry when I attack. Doesn't make much difference at this point because I don't see them getting into the, uh, the position where they're going to be attacking you on this turn. So now I roll to see if anybody gets released. Well, I got lucky. So you have one unit across. I add one to the die roll of six. It's a seven. And my release schedule is over here. And it says I can release any two units. So I want to try to contain you as quick as I can, and I also want to send some striking forces in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate one of my cavalry units and this infantry, this big infantry corps, and they're going to start rushing in to contain the bridgehead. Okay? So that's the end of my turn. Okay. So now it's your turn for turn two. You're going to get another reinforcement. Mm -hmm. But before we worry about that, the first thing that happens in this game is not, for you, your event. It's rolling to repair the bridge. Yeah. I'd like to get that bridge working again. A three. Okay. How does that do? So here's the bridge repair table down here. Uh, one or two repairs damage, three not so much. So um, it's repaired. You flip the bridge back over to no, itself. I, no, I rolled a three. I only repair it on one or two. Is that, isn't that right? No, no, it's the other way. Oh, you're right. Remains damaged. Remains damaged. Oh, Not repaired damage. Yeah, I, should, I so, need to stand your bridge, closer to That's right. Okay. Okay, so I am repaired. That's good. That's good. Okay. So now we draw your event card, and your event card for the French is onto the march belt. During your movement phase, designate units of one core to gain plus one to their movement allowance. Well, you've got units from the third core and the fourth core. The fourth core. I'll give... Uh, the, the extra movement point. They've got further to come. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is... Try to cross the bridge try again. Try to cross the bridge again. So I have to roll again to see if I yep. get it. A two. Okay. I made it. A two is the unit successfully crosses. But. But, <laughs> dot, 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 the bridge got washed out again. So now you have a second unit across the river, but the bridge is out again. And Napoleon comes across for he free. He comes across for free, he's basically. Not he's not a unit. Although that's a big, heavy carriage he's riding. So, so the rest of you guys can move on to uh, Lobau Island and get prepared to come across. I didn't really need the extra movement point there, did I? But that's, uh, these well, guys actually come, they're, they're up here. Yeah. Um, well, this guy can use, well, I really can't use Well, just stage movement. him in front of the bridge. Yeah. There you go. This guy comes in one, two, well, he could use the extra point, three, sure. gets him to there. So. Okay, you going to leave everybody else where they are? Um, yes, I think I am. Okay. So all things considered right now, looks like you've got a nice solid little bridgehead set up. You've secured the two fortified villages, mm -hmm. and I'm starting to descend upon you. So I'm going to pull my event card, and I get fire rafts and, and floating mills. So the pontoon bridge, if it is damaged, 
it, or is currently operational, which it isn't, would be automatically damaged now. But since it is damaged already, we roll to see if it's completely and permanently destroyed. This could be that a would very, be very short game if <laughs> yes. you roll badly. So roll a die and don't... I, I roll a die. Yes, oh, you roll wonderful. the die, sir. So I can't even blame you. One or two, and that bridge goes pop. Oh, a five. All right. So it isn't destroyed. I snatched disaster from the jaws of catastrophe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. So I roll my release roll. I get a one. I add the number of units you have across the river, which is two, to one is three. So one through three, no Nothing. units released. So I still only have just a token force contending with your bridgehead. So he's going to move, and I'm going to send him up here. Now. Let me explain real quick, because this is a new feature for this game. These hexes with the yellow stars on them, you see some of them. Mm -hmm. Those are not quite objectives. They're sort of semi-objectives. As long as you don't hold any of them, at night I regain two morale. If you take one of them, I only gain one, which is the normal nighttime recovery rate for this mm -hmm. game. And you can see a regular friend, uh, Austrian objective there in Otterklau. So that's why I'm putting that guy in the town. I'm hoping to keep you out. I see. So we move to game turn uh, three now for you. Mm -hmm. And you're going to draw your event. Matters must develop. No effect. Reshuffle the deck. So we're going to take all the cards, shuffle them up. And now it's your turn. So roll to repair your damage bridge, sir. Let's move these replace these reinforcements down here. Okay, the bridge is repaired. Is repaired. Okay. So now, the, now we see if it he stays. Can get if he can get across. Now, do I roll once for each unit that crosses? Every the, unit. Okay. First guy breaks the bridge, but does get across. Yeah, so now you have three units across. Put him there. Okay. And the bridge is broken. Right. Uh, so everybody else just shuffles up. This guy comes <laughs> in a conga line waiting for the bridge to get right. Ooh, What do we have here? The guard and the and uh, the, reserve the reserve cavalry. cavalry. Oh, they're fun. With that beautiful new Carassier One, icon. Two, three. One, two, three. Now the traffic is backed up. That's as far as they would have gotten anyway. Yeah, so that's this about is, right. Yeah. Um, of course, I would have gotten this guy across. That would have been nice. Yeah. Um, oh, I think I'll come up here and thump me. Yeah. See if I can thump. And you're that gonna. Guy. He's gonna hold aspirin. I take it. Yes. Okay. Yes. All righty. So. So you have combat strength of two. I have one plus an additional one in the village. So that makes me a two. But I'm cavalry, so I get a reaction phase. That's correct. Now normally, I could counter charge or I could disengage, but I think I'm just going to stand there and take it like a man. Now what does Napoleon do? I haven't played a game with Napoleon. Okay, the leader, when you launch an attack anywhere on the map, you want to be within the leader's sphere of command. The number he has isn't a combat strength, it's his range of command. Mm -hmm. As long as any unit, when it attacks, in an attack, has command, then the attack goes forward at the normal calculated differential. Mm -hmm. If none of the attacking units are in command, then you reduce the attacking differential after all other modifications by one. I see. And you'll notice my only leader, Charles, is sitting way back here in the rear watching things from the heights of the hills, which means if I ever have to actually attack down here, I'm doing it at a severe disadvantage because no one's coordinating me. So, uh, so until Char Charles shows up, I can I, I have a measure of... Uh, superiority. Of, of superiority and also security. Yeah. Be, is it going to be harder for you to attack? Okay. Very much so. Uh, so I don't really need to bring Napoleon all the way up like no, that, No, you I? can actually leave him back. So I probably want to leave him back here in Essling, even though he doesn't provide much of a garrison for it, but he can... Uh... Yeah. Okay. Okay, all so right. thump me. So I'm, uh, so I'm plus one. No, I'm even, you're because a, you're in a You're in a zero. I'm in a zero. I can, sp I can pay a morale point. Okay. I'm going to do that, and that makes me plus one. Yeah, well, I'm going to stay where I am. I'm going to let you have your plus one. Okay, let's see what happens here. I rolled a one. 
One on a plus one. <laughs> You're forced to fall back. I fall back. I withdraw. So I fall back one hex. That's correct? Yep. Okay. Now, I'm cavalry. I have to check to see if I can control That's my correct. soldiers. So we go over here and look so at we, the controlled, controlled advance, advance table. table. I rolled a five. Fortunately, these guys are relatively disciplined. They don't have to advance. So I'm just going to leave them there in Rostorf and laugh at you as you run away. Bye-bye. So I think that gives everybody a pretty good idea of how the game plays. We've played out three of the 17 turns. So that's a quick look at uh, our Napoleonic 20 game, Danube 20, which will uh, be available through Victory Point Games. And I hope you enjoyed this peek and play preview give you an idea of what the game entails. Thank you.